All right. Welcome. Hunter Smith. Yeah, you got a real academic on your hands today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so grateful to talk to you. I'm interested to see what happens here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have pound just pounds of notes prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, really, you take pounds of notes. <laughs> You've taken pounds of notes of <laughs> a lot of things throughout your life, right? I mean, like with with magic, I think that's like one of the things I've really appreciated about you is like you like really studied it. Like you really wanted to like learn the ins and outs of like uh, many aspects of like Egyptian culture and like the, the different, uh, you know, teachings that have been like written down, like the Kabbalion and like all the, you know um, it's, it's really cool to, to, to know that like when you're really passionate about something, you just like really just get like really nerdy with it. And that's cool. Yeah, I don't have like, I'm like super, I'm like either won't do anything at all. Like I can't make myself do it or I'm like totally obsessed with what I'm doing. And, yep. you know, so, and lately that's really become, you know, I'm trying to become a licensed tattoo artist. So I've just been like making art and studying techniques and trying to consume information. And my, magic practice has really kind of taken a back seat the past, like since I've had my son and, uh, you know, just since like COVID and life and everything, of course, once you do it for so long, it just be becomes how you think, you know, like I mm -hmm. think and I see the world in a magical way. So I'm like yeah. basically constantly praying, like constantly talking to a higher power, like, whether I'm like depressed as shit or like dealing with something difficult or, you know, the moments of like awe and mystery and beauty. And, um, and on that, I was going to say, can we start this with like a little prayer? Absolutely. I'd cool. love that. Would you like to lead it? Uh, yeah, I was going to read, uh, it's kind of, it's an old translation. I'm not exactly sure anymore of exactly where it comes from, but it's, it's the Lord's prayer, but a little bit different. Okay. Ooh. All right. Father and mother of the cosmos, ever shimmering light of all, your light is focused within us as we breathe your holy breath. Now you enter the sanctuary of our shared hearts, uniting within us the sacred rays of your power, your beauty and awakening our heart's desire that unites heaven and earth through the sacred union. Your light shall guide us as we fulfill what lies within the circle of our lives today. We know that you already forgive us of our secret fears as we choose to forgive the secret fears of others. Let us not enter forgetfulness of reality, tempted by false appearances, for from your astonishing fire comes the eternal song restoring and sanctifying all it is renewed eternally in our lives and throughout creation we seal these words as truth in our hearts committed fully in trust and in faith as together we say amen amen wow that was great where do you you don't know where that's from it's it's a version of the lord's prayer um i found it somewhere when I was like 17 and I've kept this like really beat up piece of paper in my wallet for like years <laughs> nice. of the prayer. And it's just kind of like one of my go-tos to help me remember to just like what's going on, you know, be present, yeah. you know, yeah. it's all a game, you know, it's all for fun. Yeah. It's beautiful. I, I love the part. Like uh, forgive, forgive me of my secret fears as we choose to forgive the secret fears of others. Um, what does that show for you? I think, you know, some of, especially in society today, you know, 
taking medications for like depressants and anxiety and stuff is like way uh, and just about anybody can go to a doctor and they'll just like prescribe you a bunch of random stuff you know and i'm not saying like there's people that really need help and it can help a lot of people i'm not like anti you know modern medicine completely but i think that it's a distraction and kind of denial of like the human experience, you know, like just being a human isn't supposed to be easy. And, uh, I think we all carry secret fears. Um, you know, we wear masks, we like play a role depending on who we're with and what we're doing and where we go. And we have this kind of like phantom self that we build up to, present to the world for so we're accepted and safe and we Mm -hmm. can play along you know but that whole time we're carrying the secret fears within us in every situation you know every person that i meet you're not going into that from an authentic place you're going into that automatically from a place of fear because the reason you play roles is for acceptance yeah, And it's the fear of not having acceptance. It's your secret <laughs> fear that you present to the world as yourself instead of your actual self. And I right. think that prayer is powerful because it reminds you, like, that's not you. Like, you, you know. Um, so if you can forgive yourself for that, it allows you to just go at life from a place of just presence. Like, the moment, the feeling, the experience. And, you know, that's something that I struggle every single day with, you know, and I think all of us do. Um, So it's just a good reminder. Yeah, it is. And it's when you can practice being in that, like what you were talking about, how like your magic is your life. That it feels like your everyday life now. I feel that Mm -hmm. way with like meditation and just like, every single moment is just like stepping back into authenticity, you know, like just continuing to like, Oh, shed all, all like, I'm like attaching to all this stuff, like shed that. And here I am. And it's like, um, even like Ramdas talks about it, how like you, you, you kneel before God as a child, like over mm-hmm. and over and over and over and over. And like, you just continuously just be born again in each moment as you allow yourself to, but it's hard. It's hard to do that when, if you've been consistently creating this like version of who you think you are and you identify with that, not only are you, you know, convincing other people of this image but you're, you're like, you're so wrapped up in it that it becomes your entire identity. Mm -hmm. And then once you get the experience of truth, it just kind of like starts to like shake and you're like, what is happening? Like, why is this happening? And then, yeah, it's just a, it's a wild, it's a wild experience because we all do it we all like get caught in it at some point and it's just a matter of like how we choose to go about that. (laughs) Yeah. And you kind of, you talk about living like life as magic society is actually set up in a magical way to promote you to live from that place to identify with it. And if you don't identify with it, then you're an outcast. You don't Mm -hmm. fit. You're crazy. Um, but they go, there's a lot of money and a lot of effort, uh, being put in to make people identify as what they aren't. Um, and you know, and that, that's where all of our fears of loss and death and everything else come from. Cause if you identify totally with this phantom idea of yourself, that the idea of that disappearing, uh, if you identify with that, then you disappear. You're nothing, you know? And right. I think that's the shock of 
um, a really deep psychedelic experience is because yes. it's the the shattering of that, and you think there won't be anything left as like your identif- identity is taken out of you. You you feel like you're losing something that there won't be anything left, and you're afraid to let it go. But then once it's all gone, it's the most satisfying experience that you can have because you experience what you really are, and that is just unending eternal love and it sounds so corny to people but there's really no other words to describe it um and once you unculture unidentify yourself you're left with what you really are and what that is is something that makes me tremble right now just talking about it you know um Mm -hmm. you can't describe it with words it's just the ultimate unending infinite love and i choose to try to talk and communicate with that love as i go about whatever i'm doing and you know especially the past couple months and the past couple years it's been very fear driven i mean every single corner is just like fear 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 like don't hug anybody don't shake hands don't touch don't look at each other's faces don't smile especially the past year and a half (laughs) yeah and and you know and um i come from like a a strange place of where you know i've been through the whole I don't want to just this to become like a COVID podcast, you know, no. but it's like, uh, um, you know, starting out in this thing, being in the country, you know, I'm a very open-minded person. I'm not like a COVID denier, but I was just kind of like going from like, oh, it's not a big deal. You know, like you become so detached. It doesn't seem real in your world. And then my dad getting like really sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, he was on full life support for basically 60 days, you know, on a ventilator and like wouldn't be alive without modern medicine. You know, that's something that I'm like really thankful that is there. And it was also a shock, you know, at the same time, it makes you reevaluate everything, even from like, just like almost losing your dad to like everything going on in the world. And, uh, and being a father, like having a kid now, um, and you were talking about Ram Dass saying like you have to go before God and make yourself like a a child as like a child or you know Jesus said you know you have to become a child again you have to be reborn as a child i watch my son and i see what i forgot you know mm. how to do and it's uh you know I don't know the right words to say, but I'm like jealous when I look at him. Cause he's like, so in the moment, <laughs> he's like so beautiful and so yeah. loving, even when yeah. I'm mad or stuff's not going good. He'll just look at me with the biggest, goofiest smile and laugh. And, you know, I realize that's everybody. There's not a single human on the world that doesn't come into this world that way. And I think that's who you really are. Um, and when you die, that's who you'll become again. And I don't think we necessarily have to forget how to do that or like what that is to be adults and to eat food and, you know, make houses. And, you know, that's what we're all looking for in art. Like when we go to festivals, like we, you get to become a kid for the weekend. You get to not worry about anything. You get to play and be goofy and have fun and, be silly and i think that's a big failure in religion today Mm. is that it's so serious it's just another society driven game it's not about god at all you know like yeah i think at least personally in my experience yeah. yeah it's you know i think a lot of dogmas and hard driven rules. And I think a lot of that does a disservice to the actual experience of having a real relationship and connection with whatever God is, at least in my experience. 
it's when you can get out of your way and detach from all the symbols and all the words and all the rules. It's like life becomes fun. And in that moment, it's that's God. Like, I believe creation is God's way of having a good time, you know, even when things seem uh, really dark and scary. It's a really good story, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a really good story. You're a good story. Thank you. <laughs> I miss you, man. It's been too long. I miss you. Yeah. For people watching this, you know, me and Tony are very connected at the heart and we haven't really communicated in a very long time. I mean, since I moved from Michigan, it's already been what, like five years four years well the thing about this that's really interesting to me right now is i remember a time when we sat down and decided that we were going to do a podcast together or we're gonna like a ma- <laughs> we're gonna make a podcast and that was a damn near four years ago you yeah. know and i just think it's funny in this moment that here we are you know finally doing the thing and it's it's the right time you know um i feel very blessed to be where i am and i'm so grateful to watch you as you've grown and you raise a kid and you know be in partnership and all the ways in which you've you know had to face trials and and struggles and uh continue to come back to you know, what could be considered God, what can be considered, you know, uh, novelty, you know, the, the experience yeah. of fresh explosion of the moment, you know, whatever you want to call that is, um, I think you have allowed yourself to see that and experience that and cultivate that in your life and continue to return to that. And I think we both have this, like this playing off of each other um, of ways that we've, we've both learned how to do it and just like our own unique expression and, and sitting in with that and then just reflecting to each other and it gets fun. And um, I find a lot of times it's hard to contain myself like in in my voice you can hear it sometimes where i'm just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's the cosmic kickle that's stuck in my that's throat what you're, that's what you're looking for <laughs> that's the good stuff i mean that's that is where miracles happen if you want a miracle in your life like that's where it happens it's not you know and i'll never i'll be the first person to tell you like i'm still very human you know like (laughs) if i i could sit here for hours and tell people like crazy stories and things i've experienced and blah 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 but you know i think it's good you have to be i don't know it's good to be like a little bit reserved because you know i think that god or you know and that's just a term I, i know some people don't believe in god spirit consciousness i is very much a part of uh, our lives and plays games with us. The the trickster archetype is very real. And uh, especially now in the face of pure chaos, um, yeah. there's no... And... I really I read this book. It's called Between Good and Evil, I believe, and it it kind of breaks down the concept of you know for a Western mind, uh, the concept of like God and the devil, as in being the same person. And I'm I'm sure people might lose their mind when I say that, but um, I mean that as in like. nothing would exist without the the polar opposite 
you know so absolutely the concept of like darkness or evil is it's it's also a very human made thing you know and what's really going on is just perfect uh you can't get off your path there's no way there's it's one no of the greatest lessons you've to ever told of. me that's that's honestly one of the biggest things that's ever that you've ever done for my life right there is that lesson of that you cannot like it's impossible like you can't get off your path and Mm -hmm. once i understood that on a fundamental level all the chaos that ever came into my life or i ever experienced i knew that it wasn't the end it's never the end it's always just going to continue and it's all part of it it inter- interweaves with the whole story and i i'm just very grateful that like, i use that i use that whole that phrase all the time now yeah that's awesome i mean and it really comes from the you know, medicine ceremonies and what's your like completely dissolved. Basically the spirit told me that how could you go anywhere else? Like how could you be anything other than yourself? Like right now, like the only reason that this is an experience at all is because you are, you are and upon death you'll open your eyes as every other being not just on earth but in perceivable infinity there's no beginning there was no beginning of the universe there is no end of the universe there just is and uh we can do what we do i think it's for fun (laughs) that's my true belief that's my religious belief i think it's for (laughs) it's a celebration and uh i love that i'm the you know and i still especially having a kid is also a weird you become i spent a lot of time kind of as a space cadet you know detached from the third dimension you know like and i think a lot of spirituality kind of puts it down like it's something to escape from like it's a trap um but you're the trap like how can you be trapped in yourself if it's just you you can't be trapped in yourself it is you um and having a kid it makes me more attached to this dimension than anything ever now. Like it kind of made me afraid to die again, but from a place of love, like a place of attachment. And I don't think that denying those attachments are necessarily like a bad thing. I think you mean for like him a beautiful gift. Well, it's just the idea of big, you know, as this body passes away and I become some other expression, I like identify so much with him and love him so much that I know that I won't lose him, but you don't want to change. Like you hit points of your life where you're so in love with the experience that you don't want it to change, but that change is inevitable. Like I will watch him if I'm lucky, get to watch him become like a man. Mm -hmm. and have his own kids before my body is redistributed and I become something else. And there's part of me that's okay with that and looks forward to it. And there's a part of me that is like terrified because you become so in love. Like I'm in love with you and I'm in love with my partner, Lucy and my family. And I'm in love with this planet. You know, yeah. I love this planet. Um, and it's, I don't know. It goes back to the God and Satan or the good and the dark being the same thing. It's like the things that scare me the most are also the things that I love the most because I'm mm-hmm. attached to those. And it's mm-hmm. the attachment that causes fear. 
it's your attachment to your identity that you present to society and like losing that or that being denied that causes fear it's attachment that's the only thing that causes fear if you're okay with change there's nothing to worry about because yeah. everything changes it's constant mm -hmm. so whether it's bad it will or perceivably good like it will change like if you're in pain if you're sick it will change what you have to start doing is the work on how you perceive change, how you accept change, um, and how you're attached to change. Because if you can do that, then there's no need for fear. Yeah. There's no need for anxiety. There's no need for depression. Or you can just embrace it and love the experience of all those emotions as being a part of what it means to be human. And why are you a human? I think we should spend less time denying those feelings and more times embracing them and being okay with being sad. Sometimes being okay mm -hmm. with being angry, sometimes being okay, at, like feel it. And as soon as you do that in those moments, you'll start laughing. And that's the cosmic <laughs> giggle. If you can catch yourself being pissed off and angry and being present with that, you'll immediately start laughing and it goes away. And that's what I talk about. That's the co that is the cosmic giggle. That is the transformative force of the universe. I think God speaks in laughter, <laughs> and if you can find that, then it transforms everything into being okay. And it's the same moment, like when you're completely washed away your identity, you will start laughing. There's nothing left to do. <laughs> um. And you might say, wow, if you can talk, <laughs> but, um, I think that's yeah, the experience of awe. Yeah. Like the, 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 fr you know, Jason Silva, obviously. Um, yeah. I haven't really got into his stuff like a lot, but I know who he is and I've heard you mostly heard you talk about him and yeah, doesn't he focus on like flow states and stuff? Yeah, I haven't I haven't watched him recently, but um he talks a lot about um like the ineffable expression of uh like he brings up a lot of quotes of many great thinkers in the past and just like very seamlessly flows them together into this like this way of like communicating like that you are everything, you know? Yeah. And, um, that, that experience of being faced with truth in such a, like, sometimes a harsh way, it can feel like you're like, fuck. And then you have this, like, <laughs> and then you're like trying to like, figure out how to interact with it or embrace it or like, how, okay. Okay. I know that I don't need to be attached to this. How do I actually process or like, because when you say like, we can just love it, we can just, and that's, that can be hard, you know, that can be so difficult to just like, but I, but no, like, no. <laughs> um, but then, the experience of like just breathing with it and understanding that your, your emotions are valid and allowing these emotions to come up, allowing these experiences to come up um, because they're exactly what you need to experience in order to be at peace with yourself and do the work that you're meant to do on this planet. Yeah. And um, I, just kicked nicotine like yesterday was one of the hardest days of my life i just yeah. i i did not have nicotine and i had to just embrace it i had i haven't smoked weed for a week um yeah. uh i hadn't you know smoked nicotine i hadn't had sex um you know all of these things that's rough that's rough right there <laughs> just like, <laughs> like, 
And then also, <sighs> no, but this is the thing is like being away from community. Yeah. I'm always in community all the time. So now I'm living on the side of a mountain in another country in the Caribbean and on an island in the Caribbean. That's how really being back here for the past couple, like four years is, you know, it's been really good to be close to my actual family, but it's the hardest part has been not having a community of like-minded individuals to talk with, you know, to like share, to remind you that, you know, having a community, you build a, a it's like a fun house of mirrors. And you were, they reflect all these different parts of yourself onto you that make you happy, that make you laugh, that make you remember who you really are. And not having that, you can fall into the trap of, I, we're all of our worst critics, you know, we all judge ourselves a lot harder than other people do. And without the, without like a community to remind you, it, you, you know it can be difficult to maintain your positive outlook on life, you know, um, unless you can empty yourself and just experience yourself as the present moment. If you don't do that, then you will probably be kind of anxious, depressed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. piece of shit. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> rude. but, uh, yeah. It Are is. you saying that to me? I am a little rude. I'm a little rude. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> you said something and I was going to comment. Oh, yeah. You were talking about. This kind of goes into what I keep talking about is changing your identification with fear from something to deny to realizing that fear and love are the same thing. That like mm. fear is a type of love, even if it feels uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. All emotions are love. I don't I don't think they're just fear and love. Like people want to push fear away and put it over here and say like there's bad things and there's good things. And why am I thinking of all these bad things? Like, oh I, I'm not doing it right. Or like, oh I'm afraid, so therefore I'm not doing it right. Or like I'm afraid. So my time doesn't mean anything. Like I'm wasting time. It's like, there's no time to be wasted. You are time. Like time is just you. And fear is just a different kind of love. And that's what I was talking about with my son. Like I fear there's a part of me that I'm so excited to watch him grow older, but it's like bittersweet and that's fear. But that fear is love. And the devil loved God so much. He was willing to be the opposite antagonist to allow creation to just exist. Mm. Because without the devil, nothing would exist. Without the other side of the same thing. It's just one pole. It's just one thing. And that is love. So fear is just a different side of love that makes us monkeys out here a little uncomfortable, you know? Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's anything to deny at all. Like, right. it's okay. Feel it. Be afraid. <laughs> There's a lot of shit to be afraid of right now. I'm, fucking, yeah. I'm so scared. <laughs> like, and then you start laughing <laughs> because you're honest with yourself. And once you start being honest with yourself, that fear has changed to, the real cup of love that you that you're looking for, which is laughter, which is fun, which is celebration, but all those well, things are also fear. They're all love. I feel like <clears throat> the laughter is the acknowledgement of the reality of the fear that, like, or the 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 things to be afraid at that are just ridiculous like i think a lot of like i'm really excited to interview a lot of the people that um are journalists that i'm that i've become close with and friends with that have been deplatformed and stuff and it's it's so interesting to see like how like and like some of these people have gotten like visits by like different like people in the like different alphabet agencies and it's like yeah. what is going on 
Um, yeah. And so there, I mean, there's real fear. There's real, there's real, um, there's a real, uh, monopolistic takeover that's trying to happen, um, on this planet. And it, the people aren't going to let it happen. It's going to, you know, we're, we're going to get through it, but there's so much to, uh, you know, like, what you were talking about with like when you with that that laughter when you when you feel how ridiculous all this is and yeah i feel like from there you're able to actually uh come to conscious action you know because it's no yeah. longer you're doing this because of a lack or like you're so afraid so that you like, I have to do this or else I'm going to lose this thing. That's never going to work. I feel like the best way to shift consciousness on this planet is to come from the space of, yeah, there's a lot of things to be afraid of and let's be authentic through it. Let's communicate through it. Let's, let's, you know, like, let's be, be with it yeah and find a way to communicate through it and set up systems that can honor each other's creativity and ability to witness and be witnessed and um yeah it's yeah and you know it's silly because if you sit back and look at all the things that everyone's scrambling around freaking out about. It's all self-perpetuated. Like we're monkeys arguing about symbols. We have different words that we want to describe what's going on around us or like what goes on after you die or like what you are or like how you're supposed to do this. It's all made up. It's like a, it really is a big made up phantom game that everyone's really, really seriously attached to, to the point where they're willing to hurt each other. Yeah. And everyone's running around scrambling and freaking out. And it's funny because it's all self-perpetuated. Like you're yeah. every, like, we're doing it to ourselves. Like, no, like we keep subscribing all this to like a higher power to a higher power and this and that and this and that. But I think God is a watcher that plays tricks every now and then to remind you like, Hey, I'm watching and you're taking this a little too serious, but I'm not going to get in your way. Um, because that's the fun of it. We are God doing that thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I've often in my mind, I think about what would something that's truly infinite, all knowing has always been and always will be. What could it do with that? Like other than create situations where you forget you are that. So you have something to do. And that's what is <laughs> in my belief is going on. <laughs> I think we are God creating situations of forgetfulness to, because that's all it has to do. I mean, if you know everything, the only way to do anything with that is to forget that you know it. So you can have nostalgic experiences. So you can look for and do, you know, so you can have a story. Fractal yourself it out would, in millions of pieces so that you can rejoin one step at a time. And like have this like trajectory of like getting closer to back to what you were, you know. It's like, and oh, there's a person I, that was a part of my subconscious that I, that I forgot about. And then, and then now I'm like unionizing with this person. And so like, oh, there's another friend that's also like part of my subconscious that I forgot about and de deconstructed. And now it's like, now we're constructing again, but we're in like this, like, I don't know. It just goes, it's so deep. It's you. <laughs> uh, like you are <sighs> a 
and where do we go from here? You know, it's, we're also living at a time where it seems that, I don't know, there's always these concepts of like rapture or the new awakening or it's the new age and there's these dark, you know, you're talking about, I mean, there's legitimately things that I won't say on this podcast because people would literally like shut us down. You know, like you said, people get visits from people. People are contacted. I've dealt with it myself. They have my blood. They have my fingerprints, you know, like, um, we are being constantly monitored and tracked and analyzed by something and uh i'm not also a you know i'm not a denier of like um reality as in like i'm not like oh things are just love don't worry man like right things too they good that's important to no, say like i'm invested in life i'm invested and i also think that games have lots of twists and turns and there's always a winner and there's always a loser. Um, and that's what makes them fun. There's competition and competition also drives novelty. You need chaos to force us to do things. Like we're the kind of animals that if we just have a giant mound of bananas under a tree, we're just going to sit there and eat bananas until we run out, you know, I mean, as like, you know, the human monkey and there are magicians of chaos that I believe some of them think they're doing good work as in like, we're forcing human consciousness. Like we're going to force the Christ to awaken on earth by making so much competition, by making so much chaos, by making so much pain that it forces humans to get up and do something about it. Mm. And there's also magicians of illusion, magicians of control that would rather keep everybody asleep so consciousness stays in one place and they can micromanage everyone's existence while they play this Monopoly game on this planet and they get off on that. And, you know... There's ideas for everything. Uh, I don't know if these are like multidimensional entities or aliens or just crazy people or whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, my beliefs are that they are me. That's me out there doing that in some weird way that we all are. They, they aren't over here and God's over here and you're over here. They're that. They're the fear and love, Paul. They are you. Um, they're the part of you and the part of God that is creating, that's playing the devil role. We love everything so much that we we are the antagonist. We will be the chaos that the world needs to change. And I'm sure that not everyone's conscious of that. And I'm not justifying all the nasty things that they're doing. But I do see and believe personally that everything is perfect. Everything's going exactly the way it's to be. And I think what we're seeing right now is our own consciousness effort to push itself into nostalgia, to push itself, to make it change, to make us look for better options, to make us get up and go outside and farm our own crops, build our own houses, gather our own water, make technology that is beneficial to us because we will push ourselves either into an extinction of it or we will get our shit together. And the only way we'll ever get our shit together is to push ourselves to the brink of an extinction event to give us the motivation collectively to do it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that's going to take, but I, I do believe in the hero's journey, the archetype that, you will go through trials and everything will seem like it's you have a impossible task among you, you know, impossible odds to come out and win. And then the hero, that is the miracle. The hero always wins in the face of impossible evil, in the face of 
impossible perils to face. The hero shines and somehow by a miracle wins. And I think we all are that hero together, this planet, our species. We are a hero and we are our own villain. And we're doing this together for a purpose. And that is to create something that maybe God has pr- never even seen. Maybe that's what God is looking for. <laughs> if you know everything, then wouldn't you start trying to create something to make something that you don't know? I mean, I don't know if that makes any sense or if that kind of, you know. I see where you're I don't going think, with it. I don't think that you would be infinite all-knowing and not do anything. Like, uh, you'd just be bored. Be infinitely bored. Um <laughs> like nostalgia or, is the or process infinitely of, happy. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe, like I said, these are all words to describe little feelings that we all get. And some of us feel those feelings differently. Like those are body feelings. It's, it's love. Like your boredom is your love. Your, you know, like your fear is your love. Um, It's just us. Like we and we perceivably have a choice to play this game in a certain way, but I think whatever happens, it's creating something new. It's a birth. We are collectively, that's the, arc, you know, that's, yeah. I think the occult and like magic and everything gets a bum rap. There's been some, especially even from early on, you know, there was active media trying to discredit magicians like Alex or Crowley and everything else, which she did some pretty crazy stuff. Um, but you know, we're, we are the consciousness fresh out of witch trials, fresh out of the conquering of all pagan and tribal communities. We wiped out all of North America, all of South America, all the Irish and Nordic clans, all the pagans were wiped out. They're heathens. They have nothing of value. They're devil worshipers. And we are the product of that, that game, that, that consciousness created us. And really what paganism to me is, from my understanding, is the recognition of the fer- fertility, the force that generates everything that generates mm-hmm. the stuff not just human beings the sex isn't just physical it's not a physical yeah. symbol it's a symbol of death rebirth and that is what generates everything mm-hmm. there is a masculine and feminine f- force that pervades that is creating that is a creative force the the lord the lady the goddess the god what nature is doing it's just observation. Paganism is observation of what is and what you feel. Um, at least it is to me. And I think we're all the bad and the good. We are making love and we are creating something new. And it's pretty kinky. <laughs> <laughs> kinky indeed. <laughs> Well, you want to wrap this up? Yeah, we can. That sounds I mean, good to me. We can, and we can we can continue too. I don't know. Um, that was that seemed like a really good spot. Yeah, like, it seems good. Yeah, we don't want to burn ourselves out too much. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm down well, to still talk talk for a minute if you want or whatever. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, but, it's yeah. um, I I have a feeling that you're gonna be we're gonna do this podcast many many more times. I would love to, uh, to do me, something like, re- regular, you know? I I like the whole, like, y- you know how Duncan Trussell and Joe Rogan have their, like, that podcast that just, like, comes yeah, back yeah. around? I would like yeah. to do that with you. Yeah, and if I can get my, you know, ducks in a row, I'll definitely have you on my podcast and kind of collaborate and continue to... I think right now is the, the most important time to be artist, to yeah. create, to share, express to express what's going yourself. on, like express yourself. Cause it's going it's through the all only of thing. us. 
all this energy, it's all energy. We're all feeling it. And we're all trying to describe words to it to make us feel okay enough to like get through the day. But really you've got to put it on paper, put it in wood, put it in stone, create, express yourself, dance, yeah. hug your family, love each other the best you can. Um, Cause something is happening, something big. Uh, yes. And I don't necessarily think that, um, the version of humanity that we have right now is the pinnacle. It's the be all, you know, like we are doing something together and we are becoming something new as a species. And uh, let's make that something that we're proud of, you know. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of, I'm proud of you. what we're creating together. Um, Hunter Smith. Honey. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to uh, check out fabledremedies.com. Uh, still in the process. It's very rough, but I'm going to have all my paintings and digital art and my music on there and nice. my podcast. And my uh, fiance, Lucy, makes wizard hats and all kinds of cool stuff. And hopefully we can start contributing to building uh, a community around weird and strange tales. We're going to be focused on just weird, paranormal and strange and mystical and magical stories that remind us that life is really weird. And there's something <laughs> sacred in that weirdness. Yes. And absolutely. We can. So thanks Tony for having me on here and it's been good to see you. You're, you look beautiful and uh you know i hope you're enjoying your new space i hope you're i want to hear all about you know what you're doing down there and stuff too so yeah yeah um i mean for for the past three days i've been in in quarantine because the com the commonwealth of dominica is where i am and uh dominica if you don't have your vaccine makes you uh, stay at a designated quarantine place for five days. And then you take another test. Um, luckily the place that I'm, that I'm staying that was, that I was going to when I came to Dominica is a uh, designated quarantine place as well. Um, okay. So, there's so you're like at your, that- room and stuff yeah yeah so this is my room and i'm staying in this uh building while um uh the co-inhabitors of this uh this land are um you know working on the permaculture working on the gardens and i have to just kind of stay here and they bring me some food um and i uh shit in a bucket and I, uh, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I talk to my girlfriend and, um, drink water, read books, play music. Uh, do you, ha- how long do you have to do that? It's five days. Uh, five days. and then after that, God, I was like, man, you're not on the 14 day. Are you? No, that's a, no. that's a meditation. No, yesterday routine. it honestly oh. was, it was really hard. It was yeah. really hard. Um, and I had, I really got through it by, by talking to my girlfriend, just like, just continuing to like, um, find things to do and also like talk to somebody like, because I was, I felt very isolated. Um, but I think I'm, I'm finally past the, the, uh, the hardest part. And I'm excited to really learn about these plants. And yeah. I had a so vision what will yesterday. You be? Yeah. I had a vision yet, or no, it was two days ago. I had a, I had a vision of this, this native woman pouring ayahuasca down my throat. It was the weirdest thing. And then come to find out the next day I was talking to one of the people here and they said, you know, right there, uh, we're growing a uh, ayahuasca vine. And I was like, really at the, like literally the same place in which I had that vision. So yeah. There's, there's she's some magic. Alive. Yeah. She's, there's some magic she's alive. Happening. She is there. Um, 
Good. So uh, do, uh, do they do a lot of ceremony work and stuff there? Not like, really. What are you going to be working on? Not really. I'm going to be working on um, a lot of. Uh, I'm 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 not sure what I should say, you know, and yeah, I, that's okay. a lot of it. A lot of it is just growing food. Like, honestly, a lot of it is cool. we're going to be cultivating the land here because the jungle grows fast and yeah. we have a lot of inter. Do they have can you grow? I guess you grow year around there, right? Do they have like a rainy season and a like dry season. Yeah, I don't really know anything about where you're at, so. Yeah, so the Commonwealth of Dominica is in the Caribbean. It's like uh, a little bit south of Puerto Rico. And um, right now is like hurricane season and it's the rainy season. Uh, We just had a hurricane pass uh, a little bit south of us a couple days ago. Uh, It was just a, it was like a category one. So it wasn't, it wasn't too intense. Um, But I think it's the uh, it's it's through Cuba right now. I think I think Cuba is getting hit. Um so for the per- first few days it was just rainy and windy. Um but yeah, what I'm going to be doing is just like learning about life skills, like really just like learning about permaculture and applying that those practices to my life and really yeah, learning how to um, work with the land and be in an off grid experience and really like allow myself to be immersed in that. So that like that way of life is just ingrained. And whenever I return to wherever, uh, you know, going back to Grand Rapids or going back to, or, or, um, visiting a different intentional community and possibly helping there because I have the skills now, to then like be of be of service or be helpful um i'm going to i'm 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 excited for the possibilities i'm really just like diving deep into learning as much as i can yeah right now with the i honestly think that is the most powerful thing you can do um facing the situation that we are right now in the world is taking your own food and water consumption into your own hands because especially through movies and everything as soon as like society starts to break down our first thought as a species has been programmed to like well i'm gonna take it from somebody else like now it's dog eat dog everybody for itself like i'm gonna go rob the grocery store i'm gonna go rob i don't care who it is but if we all approached it from a space of reliance where we could come together and immediately know like our whole towns, our whole counties are like, this is set up for agriculture. Like we can grow our own food and this is how we store our food. And this is how much we estimate to have to be able to share with people. It's not ideal, but instead of our first resort being chaos, it needs to be set up. And I don't, I was talking to Lucy the other day. Why is there not like a year of school where you have to learn about agriculture? Like you have to just learn how to grow and take care of your own food, depending on like your climate where you live. Mm -hmm. Because if people could do that, there's, literally no need to hurt each other like we're all good i don't know how yeah. i feel about the uh with it being forced <laughs> but yeah, i well, do you think get what i'm saying yeah it should I, just yeah. be not forced. that's a strong <laughs> word but it should just be a part of curriculum yeah you know? no yeah, yeah that's well, what that's, i meant it, absolutely. it shouldn't even be an elective i mean it as like it should be like hey this is what you need to do to graduate you know right like, i yeah. didn't mean like put a gun to your head i just meant like it should be like a part of finishing school curriculum you know it's good to point that out because i know the yeah, the yeah, anarchists yeah. are going to come on here and they're going to hear that and yeah like, that's yeah. oh you enforcing communism to, <laughs> no i have to really watch myself with the modern because i'm very prone to just radically speak my mind and yeah. i also make very kind of harsh jokes a lot 
because I try not to take anything too serious. Like, that's the power. But I do have to. I, I also know that sometimes I come off as unsensitive, and I don't mm. want to do that to anybody mm-hmm. either because my intentions are loving. Like, I really don't give a fuck about how you want to live your life as long as you're not hurting other people. You know, mm-hmm. like, I really don't care. And I think that there's a power in like the state of um woke culture you know like uh making people accountable for how they treat each other and how they speak but i also think we're it's easy to go too far and it becomes a disservice Mm -hmm. to everybody's ability and it becomes less about it becomes more a more powerful tool to separate us and to make detachments between communities instead of bringing us together and holding each other accountable should be something that brings us together, not something that pushes us apart. And we are dramatically pushing each other apart. Like you can say one tiny thing or one you can, and we all have moments where we, and we all change our feelings change every day. And sometimes you say something and people will just attach that to you. This is this person you're blacklisted, you know, you're shut off social media or you're categorized as like, oh, you're a left wing or you're right wing or you're this or that, you're that. And that is, that is a tool given to us by chaos magicians to make sure that we do not have unity. It's, it's, a, it's illusion. It's magic. They want to keep us apart because the real transformative magic will come when we can surrender and not be so attached that's why i say the most powerful thing you can do is not take things too serious because somebody might say something you don't like but if you then are so quick to give yourself permission to be hurt by it all you're doing is stealing your own power all you're doing is casting a negative spell on yourself when really you can just hear that as a word as a symbol understand that this is just a part of you that's trying to communicate and it's really not that big of a deal like that word isn't going to hurt you like you're okay um talk it out don't don't shut each other out talk about it like you need to talk more than like that's the moment instead of shutting somebody up you need to talk to them more well i think a lot of people really need the skills of proper communication you know I I really feel like people need to people a, a lot of people are lacking the skills of being able to um talk peacefully. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I think it's not their fault. I think it's a fault of, you know, parental structures and then also like our culture in general just doesn't like our we we are only just coming to a level of communication with each other that is honoring all of our energy and honoring what needs to be expressed and honoring um honoring compassion like having compassion for like the the way somebody else grew up and those experiences leading to like how they see the world and it's a it's a mystery to me how you know how it's all going to play out. But I think circles of communication, like, like how we do with grass, you know, the, the bringing together (laughs) activists and artists and musicians and neighbors and friends and family into the same space and allowing each, each person to have their own experience and express but also set the intention of like, let's be vulnerable. Let's be authentic. And, you know, Mm -hmm. a lot of things can come through in those spaces that can be hard to deal with. But when people are allowing, (laughs) when people are allowing for each other to be heard, I think, I think it allows for the, the, the truth to come through what needs to be shared. It's the only way. Um, is it raining there? Yeah. 
<laughs> is it very loud? Yeah. Okay. I was like, uh, it's not super loud, but I can definitely hear it. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Eventually, I want to get um, some soundproofing. Uh, yeah. The, the thing. The thing about this uh, building that I'm in is that it's open in many different places. Um, and so sound like when it rains, it's, you can easily hear it. And, uh, if there's any sounds cool. outside the room, but I also figured it doesn't, you know, you know I rain, mean, it's not rain sounds like, cool. So yeah, no, it's, it's nice. Fine. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. You know? Yeah. But you know, this stuff isn't very expensive and I, I don't know if you're allowed to hang stuff up there or not, but you know, there's non-invasive ways to do it. But off what you were saying, I wasn't trying to change the subject. I could just like hear it. And I was like, what is that? Uh, But I think what we're, what we're experiencing is we're, I really believe we're trying to create a new language Mm -hmm. as a species, Mm -hmm. because as the world becomes, and we're in this, I feel so conflicted. We're in this weird state. Like we do need a one world culture, like, you know, and there's all this movement, you know, and a lot of fear. Me, I'm, you know, I'm the first guy that'll be like, Oh, it's reptilian aliens, you know, like whatever. It's fun. Uh, but I'm into a lot of conspiracies and stuff, but you know, there is a huge movement for one currency, one world currency, one world government. And, you know, it's like we are in a situation where, like, the only way to stop war, and I'm not saying we need a governing body that forces us to do all these things, but we do need one language, one, one, like, no countries, like, we are just the earth, like, one world one money, one people, like it makes sense in like a loving way. Like that's what we're all talking about. Like we are one, you know, we're all one. So how do we start to navigate these systems where we don't let old patterns control them? Cause that's the effort is like one world government is inevitable. One world currency is inevitable. Like one language is inevitable even if it takes a thousand years two thousand years like that's what we're all merging together we're all breeding with each other like one species there won't just be individual races which that scares people but that's what's happening and it's really what needs to happen because that's the only way we're going to heal all the past trauma that we've had between each other and all the reasons that we have so much trouble with race and the only way to heal that is to create a, a global people, you know, a global connection. Um, but there's forces that want to, they see it coming. I don't think it's necessarily their agenda. I think they see that that is going to happen. So they're trying to make sure the dominoes fall in their favor because their families have had all the money, all the power, all the land since the beginning of human history. And they're trying to figure out how to be in that same seat when the dominoes fall and we're all connected. You know, the Internet was the start of that where we can all speak. Now we just need a language that we can all convey the same meanings and the same feelings. And, you know. I mean, Terrence McKenna in the 70s and 80s was talking about memes, creating pockets of images that create a vision of complex ideas. And now memes are the most shared form of communication on the Internet, even Mm -hmm. though we use them for a lot of funny ignorance and there's a power in it. And that's not going to be the end state either, you know. Uh, And a lot of people talk about the language that you can behold or see rather than speak. I don't know if that, I think we're all trying together. Like we are creating a new language. We're creating new ways to communicate with each other. We're creating new ways of connection. And there's a lot of weeds to pick out of that garden, you know, and that's what we're doing right now. Um, And that's why it's important 
to not be like, well, let's burn the whole garden because I don't like all these weeds. You know, it's like, no, let's pick these and let's tend to it and let's talk and let's figure this out because it's going to happen. And if we don't collectively start really trying to make something for the whole people, like that it will be taken over and it will be controlled just like things have been for thousands of years. And that's what they're trying to do, whoever the, they are. Um, and the only way that we don't allow that to happen is to take our power into our own hands, like growing our own food, like taking our power of communication into our own hands, taking the power of our communities into our own hands. That's the only way that we will create something that will be beneficial. That won't be just the same thing in a new regurgitated, you know. Yeah. And I don't think that those old patterns can survive. I think they're clinging, like they're trying everything they can, but it's an they're losing. It's a fighting a losing battle because they're either going to just well, we're going to blow this whole thing up or it's going to change. And I personally believe that their sense of power is also a phantom. That's their phantom. That's their illusion. And without it, they they are terrified, you know, to lose that power. It's what we were talking about earlier, like the attachment to change is also they share the same fears that we do, even if we have them on our individual life day to day the same fear they feel is the fear we feel for a change for attachment and i think it's important that we show the powers that be that there is an option that's okay and like they are not going to be put out like we it'll be beneficial for everybody like we don't have to burn and eat the rich to fix the world you know like we have to remind them that they are in it with us because they're so detached if you've been so stinking filthy rich your entire life, you never had to worry a single time about anything. You've just had everything you've wanted. You are so detached from struggle. You're so detached from like being hungry, from working, from labor. Like, I mean, you're, we are all one human, but like they really don't understand, you know, they really don't have the presence and the feeling they they don't know they're ignorant so the chaos and the control and the pain they cause is also from ignorance and it's up to us to educate them and i'm not saying you do that with violence it, that's why we need to create systems even though they're going to try to destroy that you know and stamp it out and like shut us up shut us up shut us up we have to keep it going we have to keep making better and better forms of communication. We have to keep making better and better ways. Build better ways. Provide for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, it's the only way. It's the only way that we're going to not just be stuck in the same trap that we've been in for thousands of years. And I yeah. think it's inevitable. You know, like we, change will happen. It's happening. Yeah, it is. It's I the mean, destiny it's been of our, yeah. And I think clo- the, we're getting closer and closer to that that experience of alternatives like we're we're living out alternatives we've been living out alternatives for i mean it's it's never ending but if you look at the 20th century and the ways in which we just like totally shifted how we interact with each other um especially in the 60s and the real the the huge renaissance of psychedelics and like how we just continue we just from there we just continue to expand the way we do things and like the whole idea of permaculture didn't even like come to uh the uh what's the word the like collective consciousness until like the 80s and 90s like it really wasn't Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so, it's so important now to, to recognize that we have the power to change these things and we have the power to live into alternatives and build alternatives and live that way of life, regardless of the fear 
of what certain people project onto that whole thing because like the the only way that these people that are creating these systems are going to survive is if people continue to support them but when the people decide they don't want to support these things that are actively killing them and that are actively yeah. like destroying the land destroying relationships uh destroying people's ability to like really make wealth for themselves people are going to turn away and it's it's inevitable and so i think our communities need to be strong resilient, and also have a sense of defense but also a sense of compassion like there's yeah. like a level of compassion that we must have as this whole thing continues to progress even though there's at a certain point it's we're going to feel like it's about survival you know i i i deeply feel that but also it's gonna and the details are not things that we need to figure out at this moment you know but Mm -hmm. I think I think focusing on those alternatives and building those spaces um, and learning how to live with other people. You know, that's yeah, that's that's and that's why that's why I'm, you know, I'm a passionate what and, you know, paganism is a, a kind of become an umbrella term. You know, it's kind of like fits a lot of things inside of it but and i'm not trying to discredit other religions at all but or even you don't even have to say you're religious but i think you were talking about the reemergence of like psychedelics and culture and how it's like affecting consciousness we have to remember like there was a concerted like a very driven effort to abolish pagan and plant-based cultures Mm -hmm. and that effort is what set up the culture and society that we all are inside of Mm -hmm. like we play that game by those rules and the power in it is the you know the archaic revival it's the remembrance of where we come from and i'm not saying all pagan cultures had it all figured out but there is the essence of of living a magical life in worshiping nature, nature worship instead of nature denial, uh, nature fear, like nature's bad in our culture. Like it's something to manipulate and use and be afraid of and go into cities. And when it used to be all the gods and goddesses were, were parts of nature or the experience of just what is nature and having not only love, but respect for the power and the beauty and also having fear of nature in a divine way, not as in something to separate yourself from, but to realize that you are nature. Like there's not nature here and humans over here. You are nature. You are a part of nature doing what nature does. And I think going forward, we have to take the technology we have and create almost like a cybernetic shamanistic way to view the world. We have to like view, we have to take our technology along with our values and somehow create a harmonic way to live that isn't separated from nature. We can't just keep building technology to separate ourselves from it. Like right now we're all going into virtual realities. We're all going into computers. And I think we really are going to have to take a step back. Like this is a means to an end. So like this is necessary to connect us all, to make a new language for us to communicate and to organize on a mass enough scale. But the values of plant medicine, most cultures were all all doing some form of ceremonial magic or plant-based rituals 
at least once a month by the full moons or annually having these huge festivals where everyone in the community or like the Eleusian mysteries all. And it's a way where you can't be like, there's also something that happens when somebody starts doing psychedelics or has these experiences that can become isolating because you go back to society and you don't know how to integrate. Like people don't do integration. Um, and within like a week or two, that whole thing's gone and you forgot all the lessons you've learned and you're just like right back in it and you're aggravated and you don't know why. And you'll go right back to the medicine and you're like feeling great for a few days and you're like, oh, oh yeah. And then it's like right back to it. What we have to do is be able to take that medicine and integrate it into society and build society around what we learn. I'm not saying everybody has to trip their balls off all the time. We wouldn't be able to do shit, but we have to start integrating it as a culture and we have to start remembering and building technologies that reflect truth, that reflect our values instead of separate us from those. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I want to try to figure out because I think it's inevitable. Technology is not going anywhere unless we get hit by a meteor and we all have to start over. But how or can we make flare. it something that, because really this is, this is alchemy right here. Like all of our computers are made out of little quartz crystals and gold and copper wires and all the, everything is made from nature. Like our society just says like, oh, this is technology, blah, blah. Like it's all like without nature, without bits and pieces of rocks and trees, this, none of this would exist. And then we animate it. We send energy, currency, like currents of energy through all these bits of plants and rocks and minerals. And it creates all this great stuff that we do. Magic. But it is nature. There's not society over here. that like We have to remember we are nature. We are living in a very magical and beautiful world we can do relatively anything that we set our minds to. And we have to remember where we come from, bring those values into what we're doing now. And like, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> like I said before, there, you, you can't get off the path. And I'm glad to be on this path with you, Tony. Thank you, Hunter. That was sweet. I'm glad to be here with you. And we you. found ourselves interweaved in each other's lives for a reason. And I'm really grateful oh, yeah. that we could record this podcast and uh, just thank you. Thanks for so hitting me much, up today. There's so much more to talk about. Oh, I was going to say, I could go like, I, there's <laughs> so much I want to catch up with you on, you know, we'll do it again. And uh, hopefully we can start, you know, working on some projects and making some art and, I'd like to start making some videos and stuff along with like pictures and, you know, start making some, just some thought provoking and weird soul shaking stuff. I like the stuff that makes people giggle. That makes, that shakes you, makes you remember. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> uh, I appreciate as the you. Rain. As the rain falls. Let the yeah, rain I love you, man. fall down. I love you very much and uh, enjoy your two more days of isolation. <laughs> take the, take the opportunity to just be with yourself and feel it. And yeah, I'm going to take off my, all my clothes and, and wiggle my wiener. I invite you. Yeah. Get naked, <laughs> show your butthole to the sky and <laughs> tell yourself it's okay to feel anxious. It's yeah. okay to feel yeah. alone and, and see what happens. You know, roll around in the dirt, stick your tongue out, shake your head around. You'll be all right. <laughs> I love you. Love you, man. Thanks and for having me on here, Tony. for listening and, and being a part of this. Yeah, thank you. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> it already is. There's no other way. Peace, love, happiness. Goodbye, folks. Thanks.